uh, today I am joined by uh, Jennifer Stone and Mindy Bledsoe for their fantastic film, The In Between. Thank you for being with me today. Thanks for, Thanks having, for us. having us. What's so, up, Twinkie? <laughs> So, so first of all, I want to thank you guys for this film, because I have a lot of friends and family members that deal with different <clears throat> types of illnesses that are chronic and are sometimes hard to explain to people. Hmm. And so sometimes when, when you're getting ready to plan an event, invite somebody, it, it creates an awkward tension when they don't know about it and they're going to need special arrangements, let's say, like hey, can we make sure that we have this kind of food? Or can we make sure that, you know, there's not that, how many people are going to be involved? Or I can't be out that long in the sun, et cetera. I don't want, I don't want to put anyone on blast that I know because then they're going to be like, stop talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just talking about me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's true, though. There's lots of things to consider, you know? I mean, I think when you live with something chronically, it's, like, I know I can't leave the house without my, like, diabetes kit. On the road, I almost left a restaurant without it. But thankfully, it said, like, diabetes crap on it, literally. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, and I know Mindy is the same way. I think any kind of chronic illness, you have, like, things you have to consider before you do daily things that most people don't have to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I, I think what I think what I appreciate the most is, is just kind of bringing that awareness and and the way that you guys portrayed trying to put that aside and yes that's part of who you ladies are in the film but it, you know you don't let it define you you got other things going on as well yeah. yeah well that was kind of the most important thing about making this movie is we wanted these characters to have these chronic illnesses but we didn't want the movie to be about those illnesses mm -hmm. we just wanted to show that people with chronic conditions they still live, may live slightly different, but they do the same things. We can have hopeful, good stories. And it's not just doom and gloom, mm -hmm. which a lot of times with a chronic illness, it kind of feels that way. But, well, I think the movie can give the little hope that there's, there's, there's a chance and there's a way, even with um, your chronic illnesses, just, just to do life. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. And now that I've rambled on a few minutes also about what I like about it, uh, Mindy, you want to take a, take it over? Let us uh, know about what we can expect from the film. Yeah. Um, so to sum it up, it's it's mm -hmm. about two mismatched best friends that go on a road trip. Um, each of them are dealing with their own chronic illnesses, type 1 diabetes and complex regional pain syndrome, um, which Jen and I both have in real life. Um, but so they're dealing with those medical issues. And then they're also dealing with some emotional baggage. Um, you know, my character is mourning the loss of a, her sister and Jen's character is, is mourning the loss of uh, her mother relationship. So um, there's a lot of healing that needs to happen in this movie. Absolutely. How did this partnership between both of you come by to, to write this and then to jump in the car for two weeks? Take it away, well, Jen. <laughs> It started um, because I did an, another movie that Mindy actually edited and uh, our producers are, and our DP, um, Rob Senska and Blaine Weaver worked on. And the whole time they were like trying to set Mindy and I on a blind date. They were basically like, they were like, you guys got to meet each other. You'll love each other. And both of us were like, what are you talking about? Like, why are you trying to like, what? And like, they kept pitching us to each other. And we were like, uh huh? Like, and then we finally got together and then immediately like clicked. And it wasn't just about like getting the fact that like we do have to make adjustments because of our chronic illnesses, but also like we bonded over like cocktails and drag queens. So, <laughs> um, so we like had an instant bond. Um, and then as far as with the movie, I had, they were planning on a vacation and I had two weeks off from nursing school. And so we were kind of like, okay, what are we going to do with this time off? We never have time off. And we both were like, let's make something. We love our jobs. We love creating. So let's do something. And um, Mindy and I have had so many conversations about representation mm -hmm. of chronic illnesses and representing them accurately. I've never seen CRPS on camera. And every time I see diabetes, it's always this like over dramatized thing, or it's like, shown incorrectly where they're giving like hypoglycemic people insulin, which they're just committing murder. Um, so like it, it's, it was a big thing for us to represent these things and also show that anyone with a chronic illness is not defined by that, like you mentioned. And 
also that you can do anything anyone else can do. Um, and then finding the story from that desire to, to show that on screen. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest though. Uh, when, when Mads is in the, in that convenience store, she's grabbing all those, all those uh, goodies. I'm like, <gasps> I know, I know. And that was the point. That was the point. Cause Mads, Mads does not take care of her diabetes um, very well. And, and, you know, I think that's part of her in between um, or transition is I think when you first get diagnosed um, with something like diabetes or CRPS um, is you kind of have to come to terms with, okay, how am I going to approach this? Am I going to be irresponsible? Am I going to ignore it? Or am I going to take it head on? I mean, I know I went through that phase with type one um, diabetes and, and I think Mads is just kind of earlier on in her, like, let me just ignore it face so yeah that oh my god feeling was intentional yeah yeah okay uh, if you don't mind uh jennifer can you explain to me what mad sees in junior as a as a ally as a friend and then also if uh mindy you can tell me what junior sees in mads as an ally and as a friend and what brings you together in the film i love that question i i, I think <laughs> Like I said before, I, I think, you know, having something you deal with chronically definitely bonds you in a different way because it's something that you can't really fully understand unless you go through it. But I also think too, it, it's, I think Mads finds in Junior a sense of hope and a sense of levity and a sense of fun that she craves and she wants in her life. And I think Junior just brings that in spades. And so, you know, I think Mads is just attracted to that, like a moth to the flame almost. <laughs> and I and I think too, that I think they both are attracted to each other because they are in this kind of transitional phase of their lives and they both need healing. And, and I think sometimes people that, that are in a place where they want to heal and they just don't know how can be drawn to each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great explanation. Um, and for Junior, like she, there's a line in the movie that says, I, I think I use you as a crutch. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes that's what Mads is for Junior is I think Mads kind of represents the death of her sister some and this holding on to something that may not be there, um, but still connected in, in an actual reality of being alive. So um, I would say Mads became her replacement um, of her sister after mm -hmm. she lost her sister. So you know how th those relationships can be very strong and very, very clingy um, and feel like you need someone more than you actually do. So, yeah. So which brings me to my question and, and it's not really giving much away. It's in the log line, uh, but I'm not gonna say what it is, but what, why does it Mads, uh, why is she keeping you know her some of her intentions away from her? They, they really don't seem to be that if you guys are that close to me, it didn't seem like she needed to, to keep, to keep it from her. And it, it was a little frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. No. And I understand that. I think Mads is not the most emotionally mature individual. I think she's not mm -hmm. the most mature individual in a lot of ways. And I think it kind of happened really fast for her and she didn't even know how she felt about it. And so oftentimes I know for me, when I don't know how I feel about something, I don't know how to express it to anyone else. And so mm -hmm. I think she just, I think she got caught up in everything and it ha kind of happened really fast. And so she just didn't really know how to, what to do with that information and what to do with all those emotions. It was yeah. a lot of buildup. And like I said, was it the most emotionally mature way to handle it? No, but <laughs> it could have definitely been handled better, but that is a lot to learn. But also like Mads is doing something she's not sure of and she kind of thinks is probably a bad idea. And you mm. know that friend, we all have that one friend that if you tell them what you're thinking about doing, that's that one friend that's going to go, no, that's a dumb idea. Don't do it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Junior's that person. So, Mads to holds back for that reason too. I, I, a great I, did point. Feel, I did feel that that Junior had uh, all the right in the world to feel the way that she did mm -hmm. be, because of the fact that, you know, it was almost agreed upon that you guys were taking this journey and call it a crutch or what, but you guys had started it together and, and it would have been nice to, um, to, to you know, just um, allow that information. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Because <laughs> I, I just had to stop myself right there. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's just slightly different. 
than what we expect. They still finish that journey just Mm -hmm. how they needed to. Absolutely. And and that's what makes, you know, for a great film. Uh, Speaking of which, can you talk about filming for two weeks? You guys just jumped in the car and, and was it like a road trip? What, what was that? What was that journey? What was that experience? Yeah. 4,500 miles in 14 days. Um, and there was four of us. That's it's me, Jen, uh, Rob Sinska, our, our uh, DP, Chris Lyon, our audio producer. And that was it. Two vehicles, four people. Um, and we kind of, we mapped out the road we were taking and the stops we were making. Um, God, what was it like, Jen? It was fast and furious. Yeah. Diesel. I mean, it was one of those things where it was a blessing and a curse because we didn't really have time to stop and think too much about what we were doing. Like we really had to like follow our instincts and follow our our sort of gut uh, with a lot of the artistic decisions because we just didn't have the time. We didn't have the time to sit and be like, I wonder what would be the best way to approach this. We just had to be like, I think this is it. Yeah. Okay. Let's try it. You know? And so it was, it was a lot of just trying things and and seeing locations that were like oh that's beautiful let's shoot there like a lot of the stuff you see in the montage sequence is things that we just saw on the road and didn't anticipate and and yeah. thought was beautiful and and wanted to capture our experience because we truly took that road trip we would drive during the day film at night um and then film while we were driving and sleep maybe three hours <laughs> so we hibernated for like a month after yeah you know, and what was helpful is before we actually hit the road, we, we, we printed out screenshots from other movies and we kind of tried to storyboard the whole, the whole movie, uh, Rob Sinskin and I did together. So we, we had a good shorthand. Um, it was like, oh, we would find this cool location and be like, all right, remember the, the scene from this, 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 that's what we're going to recreate. And I want it like this. So we didn't have to have a lot of setup time and talk. And Rob and I have been working together for almost 15 years. So um, we, we know how the other person works really well. And we know how to, to compliment and give each other what they need. Um, as far as like, I know how to communicate exactly what I want without, you may not understand it, <laughs> but he does. So um, that, that, that helped with the, the, the speediness of it. Okay. So you did print out the maps then? Oh, I printed out maps. Or <laughs> lots of maps. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a that was a whoa, that was a fun. Uh, I got a visit. Oh, you have a kid! I love it. I had that <laughs> yesterday. I had one that was just like decided she wanted to be part of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that was a funny. That was a fun line where where uh, Junior had you know I got maps for our road trip and and Matt's like you you have maps on your phone. You don't, you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we all remember the map quest days. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, or that, that big. That, you know, what was it? Um, the the log, the big binder, the log. Oh, thing. the Ray McNally, the Thomas Guide. Thomas Guide. That's what it was. Think, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, oh Tom, that was. It, you know what's funny? The Thomas Guide has now come up in three interviews in my last three has days. It really? Uh, it must have done something right. Yeah, when yeah. I first moved to California, me and that Thomas Guide were. Mm-hmm. He was my boyfriend. I'm amazed more people didn't have car accidents trying to like flip through that Thomas guide. Like <laughs> say we can't look at our phones, but I'm like, I used to do CDs, a Ray McNally and smoke cigarettes. Like how did I survive? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so were the, some of those hotel rooms or the motels you stayed in, those were, you used those as sets as well? Oh yeah. Yeah. All oh, of them. Cool. And some of them that we stayed in, you did not see and were much sketchier than the ones you saw. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> so with that said, any challenges afterwards in the editing room when maybe you wanted to have added something or is it just like, oh, we didn't get it. That's too bad. How, how, or did you get everything that you wanted on the trip? Uh, no, we had a uh, pickup, two pickup days when we got back um, after we started making some edits, um, um, uh, some stuff with Jen and um, I think just a couple more shots at the beginning. But as far as like what was contained in the road trip, we knew from the get-go, what we get is what we get. You can't sit down in the editing room and, and live through the regret of not doing something more or better. So um, <clears throat> it was about taking what we had from the road trip and what we had accomplished there and then um, f- figuring out the bookends uh, to make all of that work the best. So we just had, we had two pickup days where we um, kind of just, those pickup shots to to give us the the bookends that we needed um um yeah i got off topic 
Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's all good stuff. I appreciate it. Uh, so what was it like for you ladies to see the final cut? I mean, was it just kind of like watching home movies? Because you know, this kind of was your vacation, but you were saying that you guys were going fast and furious uh, through through it all. That, Jen, you're going to have to answer that. I know. Because Mindy... I was Mindy... in the editing room, so... Yeah, so oh, Mindy okay. was so, so, I mean, I was close to it, but Mindy took, like, close to a project to a whole other level, being, like, actor, writer, editor, you know, director, like, all of that stuff. Um, so I, seeing it all together after Mindy had edited it, and as well as the, you know, seeing the the soundtrack with Hydrogen Child and Superwater Sympathy put in, which became its own character in the film, um, and it just, it became more whole, you know, cause I felt like, which is always such a blessing when you set out to make a movie, especially when you're as close to this project as Mindy and I are, um, is you have these ideas and you kind of like, when you're making it, you're like, I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to do our best. And then when you see it come together, it's just this feeling of pride because, you know, you're proud that you put in all this work, you put in all this effort and, you know, it people can get something from it. And we've, we've had this movie on the festival circuit um, since 2019. And um, we've had such beautiful responses from people and it started really great conversations and, huh? and it's people see themselves in the movie and that's, that's been such a blessing. And so I just, I'm really proud of what we've made. Yeah, me too. Great answer. If, if you do, ladies do not mind me asking, and you don't have to answer, what are some of the challenges that you do face with your chronic illnesses in Hollywood? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, there, that's a, that's a big question and I don't mind answering it. I think, I think for me, um, and I'm interested to hear your answer on this too, Mindy. Um, for me, it's, my body's really sensitive to stress um, and to, to inconsistency. Um, so I tend to get really high blood sugar whenever I'm like stressed or like, I don't eat consistently, exercise consistently, don't get enough water. So when you're working 12, 14 hour days on set, um, it can be really hard to keep that balance. Um, and so I have to just be extra diligent and I have to be my own advocate because in this industry, nobody else is going to do that. And unfortunately, a lot of some people, not everybody, thankfully, but some people as a female, you know, if you demand certain things because you need them for your health, you know, you can be called a bitch or you can be called, you know, difficult, you know, those are the words that get thrown around, which don't often get thrown around for men. Um, you know, they're just standing up for themselves and asking for what they need. Um, and so those are some of the challenges. Um, and especially too, it's like some days I'm really inflamed and I don't look my best. And as an actor, I have to look my best all the time. Um, and there's not really a lot of wiggle room for, oh, well, my body is really angry. So, you know, they don't care. It's just, I need to look like how I need to look that day. But what about you, Mindy? How do you feel like it's been challenging? Um, you know, coming out of college with, with a chronic pain issue and a female in the South, um, it's not like I told people about my chronic illness. So, um, you know, I, I just occasionally act. So I've spent most of my time uh, on cruise. So um, what's been the most difficult for me is I can get a job and I can, I can work a, a show or a movie. But then I got to take like two or three months off because um, I'm, I've overextended my body. I've, it's going to be inflamed. It's going to be swollen. I may have a, a big flare that will keep me in bed for one or two weeks. So when you look at my resume, it is that the timing of all of my, 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 my jobs are all over the place. And um, um, people don't ask why, they just assume bad things. So that is one of, one of my biggest issues and what led me more into the indie filmmaking world to where I don't have to answer those questions to other people and I can create the set in which I can exist on and, and other people with disabilities can exist on comfortably. Um, I, I, I want to be more of an advocate for that instead of asking them to adjust for me. I think I'd rather just start a new, let's just all be together in this disability set. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, those have been my biggest obstacles. It's hard to explain. And so I don't talk about it much and my resume doesn't um, because it has holes in it and 
time and gaps away, it doesn't look as good. So those, that's a hard thing. But I think the important thing that Mindy and I want to represent and get across is the fact that we don't let it stop us. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still a way to accomplish everything that you want and to go after it. You just kind of have to be a little creative. (laughs) Where there's a will, there's a way. Exactly. Yes. And sometimes there's pizza. Yeah. Sometimes there's, (laughs) sometimes you got to call for pizza and a little bit of a (laughs) tracker drink. (laughs) Thank you ladies so much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your honesty and your upfront answers. I really hope that people who get to see this, you know, to get a little bit more of an insight on it, like you ladies said, and uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful film. Thank you so much. And yeah, a reminder, it's out on VOD, May 18th, iTunes, Amazon, Vudu, and pre-sale links for the Blu-ray and DVD. We'll go on sale also with wonderful commentary from Jen and I. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, you two have a fabulous day and, and hopefully we'll see you on the next project. Thank you. You too, Emmanuel. Thanks so Thank much. You.